for businesses that want to use the stock management features in StoreHub to create purchase orders and stock returns, you'll need to assign suppliers to products. To add a supplier in your back office, go to Products and then Suppliers. Click Add Supplier, fill in the information, and click Save once you're done. Once that's done, and Manage Products, you can then assign each of your products to their suppliers. Before you begin adding products, you'll need to first prepare some information. Plan out your products categories, tags, variants, as well as how you want your products to appear on the screen. This will get clearer as we explore adding a product. Note that if you have many products, you may choose to import the products via a CSV file into your StoreHub account instead. That will be covered at the end of this chapter. Firstly, Key in your product name, and beside it you'll find SKU. This stands for Stock Keeping Unit, and it's an optional code used to identify a product. Next, you'll find Category, where you can choose to categorize your products. This becomes useful when you filter a report or focus your promotion on a particular product category. As you can only have one category for each product, if you choose to subcategorize or add more categories to the product, you can do so via product tag. You can add a picture of your product by adding it in product image. Just click on select new image and pick a picture of your product from your file. We recommend that you keep the picture file size as small as possible as it only appears about the size of a thumbnail on the register screen. The next field is supplier and here's where you pick the supplier of your product if relevant. For pricing, there are three types that you can choose from. Select Fixed if your product price stays the same throughout. Most products fall under this pricing type. Select Variable if your product price changes often over time or circumstances. If you pick this pricing type, you will be prompted to enter the price of the product when you select it. Select By Unit if your product is sold by units. For example, cables may be sold in meters. If you pick this, select the unit of measurement and the price per unit. When you select this product to the register, you'll need to key in the amount selected. You can enter the cost of your product here, and it will calculate your approximate gross profit in the daily sales report. Here, you can specify your product tax if the product carries a tax. By filling in the tax exclusive price, the tax inclusive price will be calculated for you, and vice versa. If you have an F&B outlet, and have set up kitchen printers in your account, you'll find that you can select the printer you'd like your product to be sent to. A variant is used when a product has different variations. For example, a t-shirt may have variances in size or colour. If your product has variants, then check here. Use a single choice variant when your customers can only choose one variant at a time. For example, a t-shirt can only be of one size, small, medium or large or you can allow a customer to pick 3, 6 or 9 muffins. Use a multiple choice variant and your customers are allowed to pick more than one variant at a time. For example, a waffle may have multiple choices of toppings and your customer may choose more than one. If you wish, with each option you can change the price of the product. For example, if this option costs $5 more, specify it in the add to price space provided either tax-inclusive or tax-exclusive. If you wish to track your stock level, select this option. You can select Simple or Composite Inventory. Simple Inventory is for most base products, where every time an item is sold, that item is deducted from your stock. Then click Save. You'll then be asked for the quantity, warning stock level and ideal stock level. Quantity is the amount of stock that you have at the moment. Warning stock level is the stock level where you want the system to warn or prompt you to reorder. The ideal stock level is the amount of stock that you'd ideally like to have. When you reorder, you'll be prompted with a recommended amount to match this level. If you have multiple stores, you'll have an option to fill up this information for each store. Select Composite Inventory when your product is made out of components or a combination of other products. For example, a suit might be made out of a jacket, a shirt and a pair of pants. 
so each time you sell a suit, these components will be taken out of your inventory. To add a component, just click Add Component and select the components that make up this product and how much of the components are used. Make sure that your components are added as products first. At Inventory, you may also add a barcode here. At the register, you may use a supported barcode scanner and scan a product straight to the register. If you have a lot of products, you might want to import the products into your account instead. A sample template for importing your products is available at Products, Manage Products, select Import CSV, click Download a CSV template, and the CSV template will be downloaded onto your computer. You can't do this on the iPad, I'm afraid. The file can be opened using most spreadsheet applications like Excel, Numbers, or Google Sheets. Just key in your products following the format of the template and save it as a CSV file. Once you're done, go back to Import Products, select File, and choose your CSV file. Then select Import, and your products will now be imported. If the import is successful, you'll see the status marked as completed. However, if the import was not successful, you'll see the status marked as error. Not to worry though, as all you need to do is click download and download the error report. This report will show you the nature of the errors.